I get a lot of questions and a lot of comments about uh, not being able to move the gear shift or maybe it's stuck in one gear or you have that that one set of gears that it just doesn't seem like your gear shift goes into or your gear shift just flops around in uh, on the tractor um, so this is just going to be a simple uh, kind of show and tell thing for what to look for on, on the most common things that we have run into here now this version is actually from a Kubota you'll see this in a lot of import tractors but the layout is uh, very universal between all tractors from the beginning of time that have you know more than one gear uh, let me turn this around where you can see it okay now obviously I've got this taken off the tractor this one has some pretty extreme problems that we're gonna fix but uh, it was a good way to give you an example of everything that's going on so here we go obviously this one has multiple ranges this, this has a, a three range transmission, a high, medium, low. In this case, it's just one, two, three. But then we have our shifters over here for our gears, you know, reverse, one, two, three, four, whichever. Um, and uh, what, like I said, a lot of people say they, they can't move the gear shift in or out of a specific gear, which right here is actually stuck. And that's just the way I set it on here. This one's stuck also. Here's one thing you need to look at. I'm gonna take the gear shift off. Now, some tractors like this one right here, you can actually take that gear shift plate off really simply, uh, but some other tractors, it's a little more complicated like Massey Ferguson's, uh, the early ones like a 35, a 50, a 20, a 30, uh, and some Fords like the, the ends, the 9N, 2N, and 8N it's a little more complicated because the steering gear is mounted on the front on the same piece uh, and you will have to pull the the sheet metal off maybe the fuel tank so that you can lift this off but whatever model you got when you get down to this point what you want to look at are these rods right here these shafts these shafts are highly machined part they are notorious if you get any sort of condensation inside the hydraulic system in the transmission or whatever they will build a slight bit of rust on these shiny pieces now i'm going to zoom in so you can get a good view of those right there so you can see these pieces right here these are the actual shift rails that go forward and backward as you see right there they should move very simply. Another thing you need to look for is once you take this cap off, this model you see, it's got three holes up here in the top. There's three springs, one for each hole and a little steel ball that goes down in the bottom. What that steel ball does is when you shift this, you see this little cut right here, it goes up and you heard it kind of click in place that ball falls into that hole and the spring puts some pressure on it. That's what keeps this locked into position. I have seen those balls break uh, or they get rust and debris and stuff down in there and it just will not roll real well. They've, they've gotten rusted in place. Uh, as you, if I can get this one to come all the way back, you can see there's another little detent right here. It can fall in this detent here and not allow this to move at all. It just totally jams it. I've also seen those springs uh, disintegrate and or come unwound or they get worn out and real thin and they're able to work down past the ball and that jams up everything. So that's, that's a simple thing you need to look for along with the rust on these rails. Now this one's a little more involved. It actually broke the uh, reverse shift fork. So I've got to dig that out of the transmission and, and either replace it or fix it. Um, the other thing, if I can hold this just right, if you see, when this is lined up, there's this slot right here. That is the trap which the ball on the end of your gear shift sits into. That allows this ball to slide in between these three and pick which group of gears you want to go to. On this one, as you can see right here, we've got reverse over to one side so that means when I pull it over here to go to reverse I'm going to this lever right here everything's the opposite from what you read up here 
Uh, and then two and uh, two through six and one through five will be the middle one and, and so on and so on. What I've seen happen is either end of a rail will get worn so badly that the ball end can actually slip past it and come out of this trap. So then it's just floating all around, not connected to any of these rails. The other half of that is the ball itself. Most four-wheel drives and most uh, newer tractors uh, from say the 80s and up, they don't have that problem as often. But uh, older tractors, these balls will get worn down and they get to a point you know, obviously they'll have a lot of slop in them because they've got a lot of space they have to move across. But they will actually get small enough that they can slip between these rails when you're shifting it and become untrapped. So this is one thing I, that I see the most common is on the uh, Ferguson 35s, uh, the TO 20s, 30s, 35s, and a couple new ones up to a 65. I see that a lot on those. Uh, the best fix, according to how damaged it is, you can just braise it up. Uh, if you decide to weld one, you need to remember this is cast. You'll have to use a, a nickel rod and you'll have to preheat this uh, to three, four hundred degrees at least before you go to weld it on. Then you can grind it down and reshape it. Um, but if, you, if you're not into all that kind of stuff, it, for the price of like the welding materials and doing all that work, it's uh, in many cases, it's cheaper just to buy a new gear shift or a new used gear shift. You can get one that's got minimal wear or whatever, and uh, most of those tractors, you can replace the gear shift itself without even removing this plate. You can uh, pull this shield up. You see, this one's got a spring on it, but the Fergusons have a, a boot, and then there's a pin in the side. You move the pin, all this comes right out. It only goes in one way. So uh, I would recommend if you got one that the ball's messed up on, unless you're just a hardcore do-it-yourself or just buy a new uh, or a replacement gear shift and be done with it. But if you've got one that's having problems with shifting uh, or it feels like it's jumped out of gear, you know, as far as moving the gear shift, it doesn't feel like it's doing anything when you move that shifter, these are the things you need to look into.